Welcome to the introduction to creating scripting containers and buttons in Display Studio. This tutorial explains the scripting functionality and demonstrates how to create a scripting container and button. Scripting containers allow users to send commands to control multiple displays or zones at the same time. To create a new container, right-click in the gray area of a workspace page, hover over New, and choose Scripting Container. The window that appears contains the settings for your scripting container. Here, you can name the container and set the defaults for thumbnail button scale and the thumbnail location. Choose Save to complete the settings and select the white window icon in the top right to maximize the container on the page. Tabs may be added to the bottom of the container for organizing your scripting buttons. Up to 10 tabs can be created per container by right-clicking on a tab and choosing New Tab. Tabs may also be renamed by choosing the Rename option in this menu. To create a scripting button, right-click anywhere in the container and select New Button. The Properties box of the button will open and will reveal a list of steps along the top of the box. Step 1 lists the options specific to your system's equipment the script can control. Options may include 8000 player control and audio control. Venus Control Suite Display Control, which allows the board to be switched from live mode and scheduled mode. The PDI 6000 Control, which controls the processors of the display. And System Control, which includes system commands. For this example, we will make a script to play content to a zone on the DMP8000 player. Select DMP8000 player control and click Step 2 or use the arrows to switch between steps. Step 2 lists the display and zones associated with the DMP8000 option from Step 1. One or more zones may be selected depending on what you are looking to do with your button. Use the gray search bar across the top to search for a zone by name. Step 3 sets the action for the script to perform. Play is most commonly used and therefore is listed first. Other common options in this step include Add to Playlist, Blank Display, and Create Playlist, along with a number of other playlist control options. Add content in Step 4 by choosing Add in the top right corner. A browser window appears and shows the content folder associated with the player chosen back in Step 2. A file may be chosen by either double-clicking or by highlighting it and choosing Add. Once media has been added to the button, the media can be controlled by the icons across the top of the button under the step numbers. The first icon is a folder. When selected, will bring up a file browser to select content. The second icon is a clapboard, which sets the play mode for the button. Content may be set to play in a continuous loop or play a specific number of times. The third icon is a pause icon. This allows you to set the pause mode for your item. You can pause on first frame, pause on last frame, or pause on first and last frame. As of version 2.20, pause on the first frame within the first file of the playlist, pause on the last frame within the last file of the playlist, or pause on the first frame and last frame of the playlist are available. The fourth icon is a circular arrow and it sets the runtime for the selected content. Here, you can set the duration of the content or the repeat count of the content. The fifth icon is an arrow which allows you to set an entry transition to the selected content. Select a transition type from the drop-down list along with a transition time. Some transitions also reveal a transition direction option. The sixth icon is the audio icon. This includes settings for volume of the file along with the ability to choose an alternate file for sound to play along with the graphic or clip. The seventh icon represents the mark in mark out feature on any motion graphic. You can set a custom start and end point for the animation or video file by grabbing the endpoints of the scrub bar and moving them in or out. The eighth and final icon is a thumbnail. Here, you can choose the scrub bar to determine which portion of the motion graphic to use as the button's thumbnail. For still images, the scrub bar will be grayed out. In the top right corner is a color wheel where you can assign a color to the button. 
In the color options, you can set a category for the color combination. Highlight the words category in the dropdown and name the category. Press the plus sign to save it and it adds to the dropdown list. More color options can be chosen by inverting the color combinations, so the blue button with white text can now become a white button with blue text. A thumbnail can be selected in step 4 of the button as previously explained, but it can also be selected by using the thumbnail icon in the top right. After selecting a thumbnail, in order to show the thumbnail, right-click on the button and choose Show Hide Thumbnail. Name the button by moving your cursor to the top of the Properties box and it becomes a text icon. Click and name your button, then press Save. Click the button to execute the script and play the file. To edit the button, right-click and select Properties. Another type of button that can be created is an 8000 audio button. With this button, you are able to set the volume of your player if you don't have a soundboard to control your audio. Step 1, you choose 8000 audio. Step 2, choose the zone that you want to control, and in step 3, you choose volume, mute, or unmute. When choosing mute or unmute, that is all that is needed to create the button. Name the button accordingly and press save. When choosing volume, you will then have a step 4 to set what level you want the audio. Again, name the button accordingly and press save. The third type of button is Venus Control Suite Display Control. This is where you can change your display from live mode to schedule mode if you are using Venus Control Suite to control your display with a scheduled playlist that is playing from a certain starting point to an end point. And lastly, system control is how the brightness and primary backup switching for 5160 processors happen along with requested stat buttons. You can also create wait scripts that can be used as title buttons, placeholder buttons, or to tell a certain script to wait a certain amount of time before executing the next line. The other option you can do is an include script, which allows you to add a button inside of a button. This can be used for sponsor buttons that are copied on many different workspaces or just have many instances across the page and you need to update the content. Include script allows you to have one master button, so when you change that master button content, all the include script buttons link back to that button so they will play the most recent content change. This concludes the tutorial for creating scripting containers and buttons. Continue to other videos to learn more about your Dectronics control system.